Here we go. Stand by, please. Rolling on six. <laughs> on You're six. Quite good. Yeah, here we go. Welcome to a new episode of the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast, sponsored in part by the Built on Dreams Media Network and contributions from listeners like you. I'm your host, Adam Skull. If this is the first time listening to the podcast, welcome. If you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. Our goal is to preserve the cultural heritage of celebrity photography from decades past for the benefit of future generations. Pull up a comfortable chair, hang out with us, and have a great time reminiscing about your favorite stars. John Lennon and Yoko Ono. The cover photo of this episode was taken in 1980, but no one could have imagined that on December 8 of that year, Yoko Ono would become a widow and the world would never recover from the murder of one of its greatest musicians and peace activists. Shortly before John Lennon's murder, he resumed his songwriting career following a break as a house husband and caretaker to their son, Sean. Their double fantasy album was in the works and was released just three weeks before his cold-blooded killing in front of his apartment house, the Dakota, in New York City. The album gave us such memorable songs as Woman and Just Like Starting Over. Yoko was known as the woman who broke up the Beatles. John insisted on her attending the recording sessions that had been off limits to girlfriends and wives shadowing John into the studio and pushing her musical critiques onto the other three band members created a resentment and was seen as the force behind the Beatles' breakup in 1970. To clarify the situation, Paul McCartney told The Observer that it wasn't Ono who caused the split. She certainly didn't break the group up. The group was breaking up, he says. When Yoko came along, part of her attraction was her avant-garde side and her views of things, so she showed him another way to be, which was very attractive to him. So it was time for John to leave. He was definitely going to leave one way or the other. John and Yoko met at her art show in London on November 9, 1966. The Japanese-born, privileged woman had an eccentric side that spewed over into her artwork and experimental music. John was fascinated with all of it and fell in love with her. Both were married to others at the time. On March 14, 1969, John and Yoko officially became a couple. They spent their honeymoon in Amsterdam with their first week-long bed-in for peace. A second would be held in Montreal, where they recorded Give Peace a Chance. Early musical collaborations with John and Yoko were not that successful. In 1969, recording as the Plastic Ono Band, they released an album consisting of John singing rock standards in the first half and a screeching Ono singing in the second half. The Lennons moved to Manhattan in 1970 to get away from all of the bad press that the London tabs were printing about Yoko. However, in 1970, He faced deportation charges from the U.S. due to an earlier drug charge and was added to President Nixon's enemy list because of his anti-war protests. The couple separated in 1973, and Ono handed John over to Mae Pang, her assistant, with her blessings. They were together 18 months. This time has been referred to as John's lost weekend. John realized he couldn't live without Yoko, and they recharged as a couple. Their son, Sean, would be born on October 9, 1975, John's 35th birthday. John's career will be forever etched in a song for peace called Imagine. It was one of the 100 most performed songs of the 20th century, and recently featured in a big production at the opening of the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea. In 2017, it was announced that Yoko would receive co-songwriting credit for the song for John Lennon's Wishes. In a 1980 interview, Lennon said credit for Imagine should be shared with Ono because he took the concept and lyrics from her book Grapefruit. 
the words are still strong and valid. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. Yoko Ono turned 85 on February 18, 2018. Thanks for joining me today for the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast, brought to you in part by the Built on Dreams Media Network. I hope you have found the content I've shared memorable and enjoyable. Be sure to visit CelebrityArchaeology.com to see many of our photos and pick up the link to the podcast. Love this episode of the podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe so you're always up to date on the latest episode. Rate and leave a review and tell your friends about this podcast. We appreciate your iTunes review. It's so valuable to a content producer leaving a five-star rating and or a written review. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast and get in front of thousands of listeners, send an elevator pitch email to me at celebrityarchaeology at gmail.com. Join us next time for the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast and learn about the lives of your favorite celebrities.